Hey physics students, here we have another physics tutorial problem video and uh, this problem is going to be a little bit more complex than the previous one. It will actually include elements of kinematics, one dimensional acceleration and also projectile motion as well as balanced and unbalanced forces all within one problem. So it may seem like in the beginning this problem is going to be very difficult to maybe impossible to solve but you all have the tools to do so and hopefully after watching this video um, you'll be able to do more problems like this on WebAssign uh, homework and tests and quizzes when we get to that point. So let's get started. And the problem says neglecting air resistance how far will the ski jumper jump if the mu sub k value for skis and snow is 0 0.12 and the skier has a mass of 75 kilograms and we'll assume the skier starts from rest. So we have our skier up here on this ramp. The ramp makes an angle of 55 degrees with the horizontal and is 65 meters long. And we see at the very bottom of the ramp it flattens out. So when the skier actually jumps, um, they will be, their velocity will be totally horizontal. And there's a 25 meter drop off between the jump and the ground below. So let's get started. We'll first take a look at what we know. We're really only given in the problem the mass of the skier and the mu k value for the skis in the snow. So we can't really do anything kinematically with that information, but we can draw a force diagram and do some force analysis. So what you'll see here uh, is a force diagram. Notice that the axes have been tilted, so the x-axis is parallel to the ramp, and the y-axis is going to be perpendicular. The force of gravity then is directed straight downwards, and the 55 degree angle, once again, is going to be the angle between the force of the Earth on the object and the y-axis. The angle is the force of the Earth and the y-axis, right here. Okay, that force of the Earth on the object, then, is not neither on the x or y-axis, so it has components. The x component and y component. Um, and I've been told that... Uh, on this solution, this is actually 430.18, but I don't want to change it, so... Uh, the work, the number may be a little bit off, but uh, the steps to find the solution are still, are still valid. Okay, so we know the mass of the skier is 75 kilograms, and so we know the force of the Earth acting on the skier is going to be 750 newtons. Obviously, I have assumed here that the acceleration due to gravity is just negative 10 meters per second squared in order to simplify our calculations. So by doing some sine and cosine analysis, we've got the force of the Earth on the object, in the x direction is 614.36 newtons and the force of the earth on the object in the y direction is 430.18 newtons. So setting up a sum of the forces equation, in the y direction the forces are balanced. The skier is not going to be accelerating off of or into the ramp. So the sum of the forces in the y direction is going to be equal to zero and the two forces are the force of the ramp on the object and the y component of the gravitational force. Solving here by using, by plugging in the value for the gravitational force in the y direction, we get positive 438.18 newtons. And this is the number again that should be 430, I believe, 0.18 newtons. So knowing that we're going to have to use our coefficient of friction, um, I instantly came over here and I know that the force of kinetic friction is going to be equal to the normal force times the mu sub k value. So using the mu sub k value of 0.12, are able to find that the force of kinetic friction is 52.58 newtons. Now that's going to help us when we do the sum of the forces in the x direction. So notice that the skier is going to be moving down the ramp and we assume at this point be accelerating. And so we can set up this sum of the forces equation to say sum of the forces in the x direction is equal to mass of the skier times the skier's acceleration and that's equal to the x component of the gravitational force plus the force of kinetic friction. Now we know the skier's mass. We also know the x component of the gravitational force, 614.36 newtons, and we just found the force of kinetic friction, in this case negative, because it is going in the negative direction on the x-axis. Solving this equation for acceleration, we get that the skier's acceleration is 7.5 meters per second squared. So, so far, um, we've done some work to find the acceleration of the skier on the ramp by doing force analysis. So that amount of information will allow us to know when he starts from rest, after we do some kinematics here, 
given his acceleration and this distance of 65 meters, how fast the skier is going at this point. Because that information is what we'll use to figure out how far he jumps. So in order to find the skier's velocity at the bottom of the ramp, we take those things that we know, the displacement along the ramp, which is going to be 65 newtons, the acceleration, which we did all this force analysis in the previous portion of the problem to find, and we know the skier's initial velocity is 0 meters per second. So using the equation v final squared equals v initial squared plus 2a delta x, we know initial velocity is 0, so we can cancel out that term and solve for v final and get the square root of 2a delta x. Plugging in the numbers that we've written down up here, we wind up finding a velocity at the bottom of the ramp of 31.23 meters per second. And so that means right at this point, when the skier is going to leave this jump and become airborne, he's traveling horizontally at 31.23 meters per second. So this enables us to kind of set up a new problem. Now we're going back to projectile motion. And so if we only examine this portion of the problem, here's the edge of the jump and the distance the skier will fall when he's in the air. We know his velocity at this point is 31.23 meters per second. And we know that is an x velocity since this ramp is parallel to the ground. So his x velocity is 31.23 meters per second. We don't know his horizontal displacement. That's in fact the point of us solving this problem. We know his y displacement will be negative 25 meters because he's going to fall. We know the acceleration in the y direction will be negative 10 meters per second squared. Once again, I chose to use negative 10 instead of negative 9.81 for ease of calculations. We know his initial velocity in the y direction will be zero. And we know that because he's going to be launched horizontally off of this jump. Now initially we don't know the time. I'm going to calculate that right here. Um, so when you first make this chart of x and y variables, time would be blank. But in order to find time, we can use the equation delta y equals 1 half at squared plus v initial y times t. And since we know v initial y is 0, we can cancel this term and say that delta y is equal to 1 half at squared. Solving for time, we find that time simplifies to the square root of 5, or 2.24 seconds. And so we now know that once the skier leaves this jump, he will be airborne for 2.24 seconds. And as we usually do in this class, we're going to ignore air resistance. And since there's no air resistance, we know that there are, there's no acceleration in the x direction. So his initial and final x velocities will be the same, 31.23 meters per second. So it's our job to find out now, if he's in the air for 2.24 seconds, how far he will travel in the x direction. So to find that, we have delta x equals vx times t. And we take the 31.23 meters per second initial velocity and the 2.24 seconds we just calculated and get 69.96 meters is equal to delta x. And that is the horizontal distance of the jump. So to run through this very quickly in summary, given this physical information about the problem, the mass of the skier in mu sub k, we're able to use force analysis to find the skier's acceleration while on the ramp. We're able to use that acceleration to then find out the skier's final velocity right before he leaves the ramp. That's what we did in this section. And then take that velocity and do a projectile motion problem, setting up our variable table for x and y variables uh, to find the time the skier is in the air and ultimately his horizontal displacement. So hopefully this problem has been helpful. I know it took a long time to get through, but um, good luck in your future unbalanced forces and kinematics problems. Peace out.